okay so if you made it this far congratulations and thanks for joining the class but if you haven't watched our previous video please go back and watch the first two three class because without knowing the first two three class this video will be too difficult for you you will not know what we are doing here so if you haven't watched that video please go back to the first two three video and review it before coming back but for those of you that have watched the first two three video congratulations on your way to becoming a developer so today what we're going to do is with what we've learned so far from the first two three video that is how to use html and how to use css to style web pages we want to practicalize them now now that you know how html work and how css work let's practicalize them so what we'll be doing is simple this is google home page so we'll be designing google home page all of this image these ones then this folder this name here this search bar this one everything that is just the way the page is we'll be designing it today so that's what we'll be doing today so let's get into it so for your for you to start if you write html on your sublime html on your sublime and click on tab it nothing will work the reason is because instead of it supposed to instead of it to show the html structure it will not show the reason is because you have not saved the file so for it to show now you need to first of all save the file so to save the file you just need to clean this one press ctrl s now when you press ctrl s go to desktop when you go to desktop scroll down scroll down and select gs class underscore web folder so let me go back so you see it then you scroll down this is gs class web folder select it click on open here click on open then the name of the file we want to save if you look at it you see the previous uh, pages we created this is page this is index this is uh, image and css all the files are still there so the one we want to create today now let's call it google google dot html so we are designing google home page so click on save so now if you come back here close this so if you come back here you see that our page name is now google.html so now if you click on html now and click on tab it will work that's because you have saved the file as html so let's save press ctrl s then click on open click on right click click on open in browser let's see what we have done so we have opened it in our browser and what we see is blank page we've not written anything inside of it so but if you look at the top of the file here this place here at the top of the file top of the browser you will notice that the name of our file we created google.html is there that's called the top nav the icon font area that area or the title area that area shows the description of the site page but currently it's showing the name of our of our file that we just created and if you don't want to create the name of you don't want the page to display the name of the file there you just want the page to display an information about that page all you just need to do this title bar that's why they have the title bar there that's the use of the title bar so we can just change it to home page let's just name this title bar home page Give it a content of home page now if you go back to your browser and refresh you see that this instead of showing the name of our file that we created it's now showing home page that's the use of the title at uh, element at the end of the html file now another title element i want us to add to our html file is the meta element 
meta element so all you just need to do is just write meta meta click on tab it will show this utcf that is just a way of telling the browser that this is the version of html that you are working with so currently the default uh, cassette is utf slash eight that's the default one it's good to just put those on so that the browser will know what they are interpreting these are for reference purpose so you can browse more on html heads and meta properties elements so we browse more on that but there's another element i want us to use a meta element i want us to use that's still very important and we'll be using we'll be needing it when we go further in this class so that's the called another meta element put meta meta when you put meta give one space write name name equal to open bracket to open bracket to uh, quotation mark then give it a name of viewpoint view point then give it a content a content at attribute you know these are attributes all these ones on, on green are attributes give it a content attribute the content attribute let it be width width equal to device width width equal to device width comma one space right in nature in nature ski equal initial ski equal one so just write view meta viewpoint that's the name for the name attribute then for the content attribute the value should be width equals device width then give one comma and then say initial scale equals one this way you are telling the browser that okay this site i'm building i'm building for both laptop or desktop and i'm also building for mobile phone so it will be displaying where your site will be displaying good and nice for both laptop and for system and for android phone or iphone or whatever phone you are using so it will be displaying where for them we'll soon i will show you the use cases of this one when we are when we start designing but for now just know that the reason for putting this one is so that it will be displaying your site on a good scale for both mobile phone and laptop or desktop for computers and for android phone and for phones so let's dive into the design so in, inside the body tag what we want to do now is to create our first the, the the navigation part of the site so if we go back to the site we see this navigation part you have gmail image this icon here and this icon so what we want to do is to work on these ones first that so will create that nav so let's get a nav element so just write nav click on tab that's the nav element so inside the nav element the first thing we want to put is a, an a tag so we'll put an a tag then inside the content of the a tag let's put gmail gmail so go to the next line give another a tag leave the ref attribute because we don't want to link it to anywhere this is just for the practice sake so we are not linking it to anywhere so the next one is image image images then the next one is let's have an image that we we'll use to represent the we need an image to represent this 
menu icon bar so let's say image img tab then for the source of the img let's just say we'll name it we'll be putting it we'll be putting an image inside the image folder so let's say image images large images slash app menu dot jpg images dot app menu dot jpg so let's give it a width a width of 20 pixel so that's it so currently we don't have this image on our folder we don't have this image on our folder because we click if you check these are image file here at the left side of the screen click on the image file for the drop down to open you will notice that the only image we have here is this book2.png book2.png but we need the app folder we need the app icon this app icon that is in google here we need it so let's go and download it so to download that one just need to search on google so search on google search on app icon for me So so what we want to do now is to download the image and uh, since I already have the an image that is similar to that one so I'll just go to my drive and copy the image that is similar to that one so to copy the image that is similar to that let me just go to my images I think I have something like that so uh, let me just copy I have menu so you those of you that don't have it on your drive already on your system already you can just download any app icon that resembles that one so you just put it inside your folder so now what you want to do is to go to your go to desktop when you click on desktop scroll down go to web gs class underscore web inside this image folder that's where you will save your image that you will download so i open my and then i'll save the image here the app icon image so i have my app icon image now so let me go back to this the code we are writing so let me control s to save so let's go to the browser and see what we've been doing so far okay look at what we've done gmail image and our app icon is here already so another thing we still need to add is at the end of the of the nav nav icon there is a span element that shows the email the person is logging in from so right span then just put a there so this this is what I'm talking about. This pan here, this place. So that's what we are designing now. So yes, we have it now. So let's do a little bit of styling. For our styling, let's Control N to create a new file. When you Control N, press Control S. We'll be using CSS external file. That's what I recommend you using when you are building your website. CSS external file. That's what I recommend for you. So to the CSS external file, just name it Google. 
google underscore style dot css so we are working with css and standard style name is google underscore style dot css then inside your style now inside the style we will now before we, we write anything inside the style you know we first of all need to link the style to the document so that whatever we are writing will be showing so let's go back to the documents at the head of this document after the meta head write the link attribute the link attribute is used to link css and javascript files so let's say link now we have it inside a css folder so you write css first then slash what's the name of our file the name of the file is google google sorry google underscore style dot css so that's it so let's add some styles to this to this thing now if you notice if you notice if you come back to our work you see that <coughs> the test what we wrote are still at the left side of the screen but for the one of google is at the right side of the screen so let's carry it to the right side of the screen so let's take it to the right side of the screen so to do that we just go to our side and say nav nav then we are targeting the nav element we're using the css selector nav which is the nav we're targeting the nav element so nav let's say nav text align to carry the text to the right let's say text align that's the css property you use and then give it a value of right right then let's give it a padding so that there will be some space a padding of 10 pixel padding 10 pixel so let's go back to our browser let's refresh okay you see our test has gone to the right side of the screen so that's that and that thing again we need to do is to style the a the a tag which is the link tag is used to carry somebody from one page to another page so for example now you see this a tag now and by default all a tag have some styles that come with them they are usually blue and if you click them they become purple that's how each tag are designed by default and all each tag by default has an underline under them so if you look at this test now it has an underline under them so but if you go back to the one of google you see that there is no underline until you put your mouse over it that's when you now see underline so if you see look at it there's no underline until you put your mouse over it that's where the, there's an underline so and the test is black so let's make our own test to black so this one is currently blue so let's make it black so to do that all you just need to do is to say since the since the a tag this a tag is inside the nav tag we can then use this kind of css selector to select it it is called the parent child selector so the parent child selector all you just need to do is to write the name of the the parent and then at the front put the name of the child so then so we are saying that the nav we are selecting the a tag that is inside the nav Control S. So let's say let's say color color red. For example, now if we go to the browser and refresh, you see our color has turned to red. But if, for example, we have another a tag, a tag under here, and then say we say testing 
testing color and go to our browser and refresh the testing color will still be here but the color will not be red the color will still take the default color of eta which is blue purple underscore with an underscore but here inside our style we said the nav the a tag color should be red the reason is because we targeted this this a tag here using the parent child selector so because we said it is only the a tag that are, that is inside a nav element that we should have a color of red this one that is not inside a nav element will not be affected so you see why you have to be specific when styling your your work if you just say all oh, a tag red any a tag you write on the page will be red but you don't want a situation whereby you will want to work on another a tag and you don't want the a tag or span or div or paragraph to be the same color with the previous one so you have to give them specific style so anything you are styling try as possible to as much as possible to give them specific style so you see that this testing color now did not change to red so that's how it should be that's how it should be you should try to style your work specifically so that your work will not be messed up so let's remove this one we don't need it so then on that style we have to give again inside the nav style we need to do margin right if you look at it margin right 15 piece if you look at it you see that there is some this place is too close to the browser let me increase this thing so that you see what we are doing this place is close so let me increase this one too so you see what we are doing okay so margin right 15 pieces if i refresh it now it will add some space the a now the a now has some space this space now has some space in between them that's what we want so on that thing again we want to remove the test this underline that is under this image because if you go to the one of google there is no underline so let's remove the underline so to remove the underline you need to do the nav inside the nav sorry inside the nav a you just need to do test decoration test decoration none then test decoration none what is the test decoration none then color let's change the color from red now back to black so this is as a decimal color instead of writing black you can just use as a, as a decimal color so your assignment will be css colors that's one of your assignments i'll organize them when you get to the end of the class so if you refresh now we have black the underline has been removed so you but if you put your mouse over it you see that the underline is not showing like the one of google so to do that to make the underline show at like the one of google you just need to write nav again nav which is the parent selector of a then you do you under here you write on hover that means on hover means if the mouse if they carry the mouse to the top of it what should happen so so let's say we now give it since we say test decoration none we say test decoration again test decoration underline so anytime the if you go back to your brother and refresh if you, you notice that the underline is not there but if you carry your mouse over it the underline is not showing the underline is not showing so and that thing again we need to style now is the this a if you notice this a is just is just here no color nothing but if you look at the one of google the here has some color is round so let's make our own round too so 
let's say nav since the a we style it with a span attribute sorry with a span element with a span html element let's say nav span so we are talking about the nav the span that is inside in nav so any other span in the page will not be affected that is how you should write your code be specific with your style so that you don't mess up your site you just want to style the span that is inside the nav don't let don't just say span so that you don't affect all other span in the page that's how you should work with your code be specific with your code styling so we are saying nav span so nav span now let's give it a part a padding padding of 8 pixel 15 pixel 8 pixel 10 pixel so what this one means is that what this one means is that at the top this one means that both top and bottom should have a padding of 8 pixel while right and left should have a padding of 10 pixel then let's give it a border radius a border border radius of 50 percent we want it to be round so by giving it a border piece of 50 percent it will be completely round so let's give it a background of background red let's see what we've done go to your browser and refresh voila we have our a styling working so let's give it a color i want to change the color from black to white so i can just say color white it will still work so if i go to the browser and refresh the color has changed to white but i can still say color using as a decimal color f f f f f f still means the same thing as white this one is called a hexadecimal color why this other one is called name color this one is called name color why this one is called is a decimal color is a decimal name color you can use both but you don't want to repeat yourself it will still work even if you use both and refresh it will still work nothing will happen to not affect the browser so you don't want to repeat yourself so you also stick with one when you are writing your code learn to keep your code dry d r o y what did i say d r o y keep your code dry and the meaning of dry means do not repeat yourself do not repeat yourself so keep your code dry so but if we go to a uh, google uh, uh, color you see that the color here is not red it's summer dark so let's look for a color that match that matches that one so for a color that matches that one we'll just say i would still leave the background red for the, in that color then i will not add another background also background let me see another there's a decimal color b a one 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 so i think this color would work so let me go back and refresh okay we've gotten the right color that matches it so that's the color that works so the reason i did remove this background red here for this one i repeated myself here is because when you are using internet explorer there's a browser called internet explorer sometimes hexadecimal colors do not work sometimes hexadecimal colors do not work and if the color of hexadecimal do not work for the browser it will just be the default color from the browser which is either white or black based on the background you put the text which is your work so i repeated myself here so that in case the these as a decimal color do not work did not work in internet explorer 
it will now be color red so instead of it to be just white and you'll not see the design it will just be color red so that's why i repeated myself there so when you when you start writing you start building project when you would we'll, we'll get to what we call browser compatibility browser compatibility is what works for internet explorer that do not work for chrome and what work for chrome browser that might not work for pramini so all of those ones are called browser compatibility we'll get to that in another course and we'll make sure you understand everything we are doing in that course so that's it so for the image let's start our nav image so if you look at the image now you see that the image is too close to this a so let's style the image so let's say nav image you don't want to style all image in the side so you say nav image nav img margin right margin right 10 pixel so if you refresh okay you have some space there now that's good so the next thing we want to do now is if you go to our google home page we already have this google logo we want to bring this google logo to the scene so to bring the google logo to the scene all you just need to do is to go to back to our html code write a div always learn to put your work to organize your work inside a div like i told you div is a block element that is used to hold blocks of code so in this case what we are holding is the google e logo so img so img the name the source should be images all our files are inside images so images slash so sorry let me get this out of my screen images slash the name of the file should be google google underscore logo dot png your might not be dot png because based on the image that you would download go and download google logo and put it inside your image folder your might not be png your might be jpg for the file extension make sure you look at your own file extension carefully before you you name yours so let's go to chrome when you go to chrome just section google logo.png google logo png when you go to google logo png select the one that that is similar to this one okay i already opened mine to make the work faster and to make the video short so <coughs> I already open mine so let's me save mine here let's me control s so you can look for the one that is similar to this one so control s when i control s i go to desktop when i go to desktop look for the folder we, that we are working with gs class underscore web click on on it then click on open then inside the images folder click on it click on open then we have our book one that's the only image we have so now we need to name this one we need to name this one google underscore logo just name it google underscore logo don't put any png because if you look at it the file is already in png for in under here yeah, the file type is already in png so don't put any dot png just say google logo and then click on save so let's go back to our work and you see we have our google in under images okay it's like our google image has not been saved so i think i don't have internet access to save it currently so let me do something this is no internet access to my system currently and i don't want to distract this video by connecting internet access 
so i'll just need to import that's how you save yours but me since i already have the google logo since i already have the google logo i can go and copy it from any of my file that i've created before so i'll be copying it from my file so go to my gs folder go to images and save and put my file here google underscore logo okay so for you you can just follow the download method that i used previously so let me remove this go back to my work so we have our google underscore logo so if we go to our browser now and go to our home page that we're working on and refresh you see that the google logo has appeared but if you look compare it with what we have here it's too big and is at the right as is, is this one is small and is at the center but if you compare it to our, our one is too big in that and is at the left so let's try and bring it to the center and make it smaller so to do that let's go to our style so inside our style but before then let's give it a class let's give let's give our image a class a class attribute so the attribute is let's call it google so a class name give it the name google so you know that class is used to style see html element class is used to style html element in your css file so to assess your file your style who can remind me of what to do well i can't hear you so you are watching video online so i can't hear you but then you know that i will always use this dot whenever you want to assess you want to assess your style your class style you need to use this uh, this dot so to assess your class attribute in your style sheet you need to use the dot so what's the name we use that time google google so we'll now say open so inside the image we just need to do width let's say the width to be let's say 27 percent of the screen then let's say margin top margin top 110 pixel margin top 110 pixel so if you notice we put the image inside a div inside a div and we want the image to be at the center that's what we said right uh -huh. so let's say div inside the div element we want the odd element inside the div to be at the center we say text align center to save go back to your html file save again Control s now go to your browser if you notice google all the uh, content both the logo the input all of these ones are the center so that's why we just say div center to make all our work easier so refresh yeah we have our logo at the center and everything is working fine so the next thing we need to do now is to create a form tag a form tag this logo here is inside the form tag we want to have a form that we submit this thing once whenever a user type the input search anything and click on enter we need the form that will submit it to our server so let's say form let's call the form element click on tab inside the form element we need to have an input so that's the input the person will type into input type let's put type text the input type is text so let's give the input a class a class attribute class attribute let the value be search
search underscore input so we're calling it search input so what we want to do now is to style it search input control s go to your browser go to our file home page and refresh we have our input here but the input is t at the left side so since the input is inside a form tag is inside a form tag we can just see form elements we can just see form form i want to bring everything inside the form to the center we can just say form test align center this way if we refresh our input has come to the center but you don't want to repeat yourself like i always said i say keep your code dry if you look at it now we have our div saying test align center input test align center since both of them are saying the same thing you can just remove this your input this your form here instead of writing test align form test align center you can just put comma and pull form here so this way the browser knows that both input both div and form and form we carry test align center instead of repeating yourself this one is more simpler so if you refresh and go to your browser it's still the same thing okay. so now we want to start our input look at the google input it's kind of nice sweet but our own here is still messy somehow so let's style it let's go to our style inside our google uh, let's give let's call the class that we use search input assess your css selector search input okay that's this class we use inside the input if you go back to our file the input we did class search input okay so let's say for the style let's say padding let's say padding padding 13 pixel 20 pixel so what we are basically saying is the top and bottom should be 13 pixel left and right should be 20 pixel then let's say width 54 percent want it to take 54 percent of the screen then let's say border radius okay first of all let's leave the border radius out of it let's say font size font size 16 pixel save so let's refresh okay yes we have an input now but if you notice the impulse still have this borderline borderline around it but if you look at the one of google there's no borderline around it so let's remove our borderline so let's say border none we don't want any border on the input so we'll go back refresh okay we've removed our border but the input is as disappear we couldn't see our input inside the file so to see to add some little bit of style so we can see our input let's say boss shadow box shadow zero pixel one pixel 16 19 pixel minus 13 pixel then let's say the color is black as, as a decimal for black so let's go back to our browser and refresh 
yes our input can show now we can see our input now so what we basically do with that boss shadow is to put a shadow around the input so you can just play with go to online and session i will put a link to um, boss shadow in the description below so you can go online and play around with boss shadow basically it's used to put a kind of shadow around an element so if you want the element to have a shadow a firm shadow you just use box shadow to put it so you can pass in different different different, different size this one has sizes this one means right it should have it should not be too blur it should not be too sharp all of those ones you have to customize them to have to give you a good look like this but if you see our input here it's still having it's not the edges is not round the left and right edge is not round but if you look at the one of google it is round so to make it round let's say border radius radius let's give it a border radius of 30 pc go to your browser Ref refresh wow yes we have a round border now the another thing i notice again if you look at the one of google if you click on the input like you want to type something it does not show any other border you see it just show the text that you want to type but if you look at our own once you click on it it will not show on that black border that kind of border is called an art line it's called an art line so we don't want it in such a situation whereby we click on it it will not be showing an art line so you want to remove the art line so to remove the art line you say art line none so basically you are telling a browser that anytime they click on this input the art line should not show so let's refresh and then click the input now you see that even if we are typing the art line would not show so that's that for that then so inside the form inside the form we want to do something inside the form so let's just give some space some spacing margin top 30 pixel so go to your browser you see that the image and the input is too close so yeah it's okay like this now give some space so and that we want to do now is image if you go to the google okay this before we write the image you notice that inside google they write inside this input they wrote search google or type a url I want we don't have anything inside our own so let's put something inside our own so to put something you to put to write that kind of text inside the input you need to call the placeholder attribute placeholder give it the placeholder the value of what you want to see inside the input so what we have what we want to see is the test search search google or type url so when you go to your browser now and refresh you see search google or type url inside our input so basically the placeholder you put it inside the input you call the placeholder attribute and then the value of the placeholder is the text you want to display so that's it then we need if we go to google now we have an icon here it's this kind of recording icon recording icon so kind of recorder so that means session with voice so but our owner we don't have it here so to do that let's on inside this input let's just go to the next line let's put an image image let's say we're accessing the images folder 
slash let's say let me use search icon s e a search dot png so you go and download an icon like i told you before i don't have an internet connection so i'm getting the icons from my library i already have a file for them so we'll be using search icon you can download any icon to use inside your own but me i will be using this search icon you can go to google and say search icon png just download anyone that is png or white background so i'll copy mine now from here i'll go to my gs class web folder i will go to images and then paste it there for yours you can just download it if you don't have it already you can just download search icon from google just type on google search icon png download anyone you see so this is the one i'll be using i've put it inside our images folder inside our gs class web folder so let me remove this go back to our text editor and refresh and save so go to our image and refresh we have our image here but if you notice it, the size is too big so let's style it and put it inside this small place so let's go back to our css so since the image is inside the form we can just say image form E I M G. So we are targeting the image that is inside the form. The previous one we targeted was the image that was inside the nav. The image that was inside the nav, and that's why the the styling didn't affect this new one when we created it. So let's say we want to style the image that is inside the form. So we we'll say form using the parent child selector. We we'll say form image. Then for the form image. We will now give it a position relative position relative then there's a top three pixel then let's say left minus 50 pixel let's go back to our image let's give it a width let's make it smaller so using the width attribute width 20 pixel so we're making it small so sorry no comma so we'll go back now and refresh voila we have our search icon there you you can just go to google and download any of the icon if you this is where i downloaded my phone sorry this is the one i downloaded so you can just go to google download any of these icon any of them then save it and put it inside your images folder so this is my icon now it's not there we are getting close if you look at it now are getting close okay so now the next thing we want to do is this plus icon this shortcut you see add shortcut this shortcut icon we need it so so let's go to the, to the next line and click on D so let's give it a class let's give this div a class a class of shortcut a class of shortcut inside this shortcut we have a span a span inside the span we'll put a b tag okay let's just put a plus then let's go down let's add a paragraph and let's say content add shortcut okay 
So you refresh, we go to our work now and refresh. You see, add shortcut. So, but we need to style it to look like this to have plus and this to have this kind of shape. So, let's go. So, since we have a span, we put the plus as the plus sign inside the span. We can just use shortcut since and we have a class here, a class attribute here, say shortcut. The content of the class attribute is shortcut. And this span is inside, is a child of this class attribute because look at the div. The div is the mother, is the parent to this span. And this div that is the parent to this span has a class attribute shortcut. So we can, instead of using this method that we say form image or div uh, for a nav image, you can just use the class shortcut. I get you. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. You just use shortcut. Then you will now say span, shortcut span. So it means that you are targeting only the span that is inside this shortcut. This div now has a attribute of shortcut. So by saying by saying shortcut span, you are now saying that the span that is inside this div this div element because this div element is the one that is carrying this attribute so it is only that one that will be affected like, like i told you always make your style specific always make your styling specific so so let's say short score span let's give it a padding A padding of 10 pixel fifteen pixel so top and bottom ten pixel left and right fifteen pixel then let's give it a background of light gray Let's give it a border radius. Fifty percent. You want it to be round, like I told you before. It should be fifty percent if you want it to be round. Closing bracket. That reminds me. I've not said it in this class. Always end all your styles with closing, curly bracket, and closing, and curly bracket. Semicolon. Sorry. This closing semicolons always end it with these semicolons so that you don't break your code. So that's by the wayside. Then let's give it a font size 25 pixel. Let's go to our browser and see what we got. Voila, we have a color and it's now round. But if you look at the one of Google, the one of Google is somehow light. The color is somehow light. So let's make our own lighter. Like I told you, Chrome Internet Explorer browser sometimes do not accept hexadecimal color. And to make that thing lighter, we need hexadecimal color. So I will still leave my background gray. In case the Internet Explorer do not support it, the background gray. With tissue, so I will now give another background and give it as a decimal color. Let's say F2, F9, BF. F2, F9, F. F2 again, then BF. Okay, I think this color is close to what we want. Yeah, it's that's the color we want. So, yeah, it's good. We'll use that. Then, for the shortcut, let's see. 
shortcut but you notice it now this image is still touching the input we don't want it to touch the input so let's have some space at the top so a shortcut matching top Margin top 40 pieces padding 30 pieces twenty pixel yeah let's give it a background of blue first that's how we'll see what we are doing. Background of blue. So if I go up now, I go to browse and refresh. Okay, we have some space at the top now. And this pan, we see the background is blue. But if you go to your Google, this thing, if you put your mouse over this shortcut, you notice that the width of it is small and the background is light gray. The width is short. It's not as long as us and the background is light gray but if you look at us now his width is long and the background is blue so let's try and bring it short so let's say width 80 pixel width 80 pixel then let's say height let's give it a height 70 pixel so Let's say margin. Okay. Let's save. Let's save first. Let's refresh. Okay. We have it small now, but it's still at the left side of the screen. We want it to stay at the center of the screen. So to do that, let's say margin. So when you say margin auto, give it a value of auto. You are simply telling the browser to carry the thing, the element you are styling to the middle of the screen. So if you are saying margin auto, you are saying, okay, put this element at the center of the screen. So the margin is used to style the LHTML element to either the left and the right, to add space to either the left and right. So by saying margin auto, you are saying, okay, Add space to both right and left to put the element at the center of the screen. So when I refresh now, you see it, voila, it's at the center of the screen. So let's see border radius. You already know what border radius is used for. Border radius, let's say six pixel. Okay, so for those who don't know what border radius is used for, you see that the edges is sharp. But if I put border radius and refresh now, you see that the edges is somehow round. It's curve. That's what border radius is used for. Then margin top. Margin top. 20 pixel. Then one source space is too is too touching the input so one source space look at the as it's not touching it so one source space so let's put space okay we have our space now and they they, are, they don't have background is white until you put your mouse over it that's when the background changes so let's remove our blue background so this blue background that we have you can just comment it out or just remove it to avoid messing your code up you don't need it so yeah you have a shortcut but if you look at it very carefully you notice that even though we have a shortcut now this test is still messed up this add shortcut is still breaking goes to the next line but they are still at the same line so our html elements we have a p that is holding the add shortcut so let's try the p so that So that the text will stay in one line. Shortcut P. So let's say font size. 
11 pixel font family sans serif let's just give it a font family of sans serif then margin top margin top 40 pixel save let's go to your browser and refresh yeah it's not staying at the same line but if we still bring our mass over this input is not changing color to background blue and sorry background light gray look at yours it's changing color to background light gray and is having this and this hand icon have an ant icon look at the icon it has an ant this finger icon but our owner if you bring it nothing shows it brings test icon so let's say <coughs> so to do that we just need to say cursor we want to put pointer we want to let it to know that okay this thing is a button that thing you want to click is a button then we want it to such that when you carry the mouse over it, it the background will turn to blue remember before i told you that you should use on hover so you use the shortcut the hover is used to indicate what will happen to the element if the mouse is put over the or the button is click or the mouse you carry the mouse over the element what should happen you should always put this pseudo selector they call it pseudo selector so you put the pseudo selector over so anytime they put the mouse over the element what should happen we want the background for in this case to be light gray using name color light gray so if i go back and refresh nothing happens but if i bring my mouse on top of it you see that it's now showing this and icon and the background has changed to light gray but if you look at yes the background is light gray but the light gray is kind of weak but ours is too dark so let's give you the background also the background of is a decimal color you remember what i told you i said that internet explorer sometimes do not support is a decimal color so to make it default use name color or name color or rgba that is close to what you want so that internet explorer can read that one instead of the one that internet explorer will not sub support so for a decimal number that are less than that has l and character less than sorry greater than theory internet explorer will not support it so let's say d theory d theory d theory eight seven okay that's the color we're using this kind of number internet explorer might not support it so that's why i use the light gray so that in case it didn't support it it will now read the light gray instead of having white background so now if you bring it you see that okay it's kind of cool now it's not that sharp like before again so that's all you see if you go back to google you see our own is kind of resembling google so then i think so let's go back so basically we're done with it that's all so let me reduce the size of the screen to 100 so i've reduced the size of the screen to 100 and voila compared with that of google it's almost exactly the same thing so we've designed google home page so this is google home page the only thing that is missing here is this search icon that is here 
this search we didn't put search icon here so in your own assignment i want you to put search icon at this side so to put search icon at this side this place you need to add some space to this place first. so you need to put some padding to this place so that the search icon can stay somewhere here so it's an assignment to you this search icon that is here i want you to put it here around here so first of all what you do is inside the input remember we gave our input a class of search input all you just need to do just to come here to, at the bottom and say padding padding left Pad, padding left give it a padding a padding left of let's say 40 pixel refresh and I come back and save okay we have some space here now now this space go and put this i kind of icon put it this at this other side of the screen so that's an assignment for you put the pa image here this place that this icon is showing that this mouse is put the icon there that's an assignment for you so that's that for that we are done with designing google home page so that's all about this video